Hey guys, so welcome to our last video. Gosh, it's been a while since I recorded since I uh, took a break. This is our scene right now. Just like from the last video, I know it was a bit of a pain and it's only one type of optimization. There's a lot of optimizations out there. You can optimize the lighting to save memory just like we did the last time. You can optimize your, your texture. You can optimize your mesh by, of course, lowering down its poly count. Also, the texture by lowering down its size. And also, keeping your materials in this whole scene right here, just like a small amount. So, we've done that optimization-wise by having this one texture. Most of them is run by this one texture. So... I guess we've done a lot of optimization here. It's just we can't cover every single one of them in this whole video because the highlight of this was baking lighting. So yeah, let's get to the rendering part. So the first thing that you gotta do is go to your asset store. It's on your window if you can't find it. And we are going to import Cinemachine. Cinemachine is just like your camera. Think of it like having a simple Sing Unity camera except you can control it, animate it. And of course, make it travel from scene to scene. And you're gonna know what I'm talking about in a bit. So, I can see we have a new Unity asset store. Not that this is the first time I've seen it. I've seen it for like a whole month now, but it's just, I never open it right here. So let's go search Cinemachine right here. And all I want you to do is download it and import it. So I'm gonna import mine because I've already downloaded it before. Keep in mind that this is going to be outside, outside of your fancy low poly folders right here. So it should be somewhere in here, right here, the machine. We're gonna use this. So now that mine is imported, let's go add a um, camera here. Oh, and by the way, since you bake your lights, you don't need your lighting right here. You can keep it if you want, but just know that even if you delete this or hide it, it's not gonna affect your scene anymore. No lights can affect your scene anymore once you bake. Unless your lighting is in auto-generate, you should uncheck this if you already bake your lights and you end up liking it and you've readjusted the way you want. But just so you know, your lighting right here is completely useless unless you're going to make, again, small changes into your light in the whole scene, okay? So you can disable that now if you want. And also keep in mind that it's right here. It should be on your scenes right here, swamp number two. This is your bake lights. I forgot to rename mine, but this is where all your lighting in your whole scene is stored. Like if you open this, this is what's being baked on all of your mesh, as you can see the blue ones. So don't delete this, because if you delete this, you're going to lose your big lights. And if you happen to not have this, you're going to be the F word. <laughs> you're going to mess up. So don't touch that and just leave it there. All right, so Cine machine. All right, let's do the animated camera. We're going to make it zoom like this without any lag or so. Now we're gonna do a basic one, but feel free to experiment and make your camera go anywhere you want. But first go to your main camera right here and please have a copy of your values right here, okay? Because once you create a scene machine, it's gonna be reset by default and it's gonna be here in the middle. So after you copy your values, go to scene machine and hit a dolly camera with track. Yeah, this one, so click. Just like I said, it's going to be zero in, not random, disclaimer, but it's going to be reset to zero. So, go to your track, which is this one, because we are going to move this by default, our old values. Mine was around 0.9, I think, and then there's 2.85. I've copied mine, it's on the right screen, and the last one is negative 18.75, 74. Right, so as you can see, we're back to our normal old view right here, which is the one I like. So the way we're gonna set this up is we're gonna add tracks. Think of it like train tracks. You're gonna add tracks like that. I don't know why my screen kind of messed up here, but it's something like that. You're just gonna add a track and the camera's gonna travel there. So think of it like your camera is a train and you're making tracks to travel onto. So for that, we are going to go to our track, which is this one. Oh, by the way, little note, if you want your camera to focus on a certain object, say your stash right here, trees, rocks, or something, go to your CMV camera here. I'm just going to rename this so you can, like, quickly know the difference. Rename yours already if you don't like the technical name. For me, I'm just going to put this track, not cam. I like the train. All right, train and track. So I'm going to go to my train, 
which is your camera, and there should be a look at right here. All you have to do is you can go here to logo, find your mesh, drag and drop right here on the look at, or you can just search it up here since you know every single mesh name, right? So that is your sitting statue, and we have two on the scene. There's one there, obviously, and there's some here in the middle. And if your camera is a little bit rotated like this and it's kind of messed up, just hit none again and go back. There you go. And just double click. Now your camera is focused on this no matter what. So we can go here on your track right here. Let's see. We can test this. So no matter what you do, it's going to be focused on your, on your sitting statue. See? No matter what. It's gonna look there. Cool. All right. <laughs> As you can see, that is where it's currently looking at right now, in the middle. But it's still your statue. By the way, you can also create a empty game object, put it anywhere you want, and then drag it here to look at, and you can make your camera look anywhere you want. One note right there. <laughs> so let's create a track for this because I want the camera to kind of zoom in and zoom out, like completely kind of reveal this, you know? That's what I want. And also, I'm going to remove the look at because I don't want the camera to particularly look at anything because I like my old view, but it depends on you what you want. It's always going to depend on you anyway, so. All right, so let's put our old value back, which is this one. I'm just going to collapse this right here. All right, so I've decided to kind of like have it zoom out really, really slowly. I'm going to put my game right here again. And I'm going to zoom in my camera. So this value, I'm going to save this because I want my camera to end there. But I'm going to zoom in. So make sure that you always save your position values right here because you might use it later on no matter how much you want to position your camera. And as you can see right here, I don't know why names change. I'm going to quickly change that. So I'm going to go to my track and this is the one that I'm going to move. So I'm going to go zoom in here. Also, if it helps you, you can maximize it so you can see the whole the whole thing, you know. And it also helps if you have another monitor so you can check that. So I'm going to leave that there. Because this is how zoom in I wanted it to be. Alright, so I'm going to add a waypoint. Think of it like your point A to B. You're creating your waypoint. This area right here. And another waypoint. This area right here. And your track is the one that connects them. This is your track. And this is your waypoint, your endpoints per se, like a vertex to an edge. So let's quickly add this, hit plus, and just like that, you have your waypoint. And as you can see, there's a little bit of tilt right there. Don't worry, you just move that a little bit. So don't touch this thing, always move the one on the left. Because as you can see, if you touch these things, it doesn't really do anything. That's going to control the curvature of your camera. If you've done a vector art before, it's going to make a lot more sense. Because you have the thing that controls the curve of your art, you know? <laughs> and that's what it is. So I'm just going to put this here, right here. As you can see, your values are no longer the old values because it's taking value of this one. Alright, so we have that. So that's our first waypoint. And I'm going to add another one. Just hit plus. As you can see, that creates our track, which is this one. So like I said, this is a waypoint. Waypoint controls your direction here, where you want to travel. This one controls the whole thing. So I'm going to put my waypoint, let's see, where's my top view? Somewhere as far as maybe here. I can always adjust that so don't worry. Focus, so F, just drag it all the way there, we can check this, how far it actually is, by going to your train, this one, for your camera, and just drag your path position, just like that. So let's check this one, let's see how far it is, so around here. I can usually use my other screen, but since I want you guys to know what I'm doing, I'm gonna kind of need to use just one screen. But that's okay, not that it's such a cripple thing. 
I'm going to take it further down behind, go to my track, and click this one. Because as you can see, your camera travels from lowest to highest. So of course we start at zero, this is your one. I'm just going to drag this a little bit further, like this. And by the way, if you add more curve, if you hit the plus sign, you want to curve this, just like that. Just know that you can have a more control over this if you mess with your resolution. It's like your subdivisions. Alright, anyway, let's go back to 1. Let's go to train. I don't know why I feel like I'm gonna burp. But I'm really not. I'm gonna put this 0. And I'm just gonna drag this. And check how far this goes. So, something like this. Something like this is, I think, good enough for me. So, what I'm going to do now is add an animation. Because this camera is not going to move itself. You need to create an animation for this camera to move. It is going to be under your window. There should be a timeline here, this one. And I'm just going to drag this. Mm, where? Where's the place? Maybe here? Actually here. So I'm not really using this part much. That's more like it. Alright, so make sure that you are on your train, which is your camera. Because camera is the one that we are animating and moving, not your track. Because track only enables the camera to move and have its kind of a position. Think of it like this. You have a train, track tells you where it moves, but your animation tells you how fast you move here on these tracks. And also when, if that makes any sense. So go to your train. Because this one is going to move. I hit create right here. I'm going to put this on Sin Machine folder. If you don't have one, just go ahead and create one. I think mine is on Fantasy, Low Poly, Animation, and I create a Sin Machine folder. I didn't put it on Sin Machine actual folder because when we go to the business side of this, which is on going to be the next course, you will find out that you're not really allowed to resell standard assets from Unity Sin Machine. Like, you can't have anything that's being sold on the asset store to be included in your project. You need to have your own project and also a small documentation that tells the buyers, the user to have your project, to download those separately and how to kind of apply it. So it's a little bit of pain, but it's Unity rules and I'm just following them and I've done this before. And that's what we're going to do on the next course. So yeah, Sim Machine right here. Have patience with me, please. I'm going to save it here and I'm going to name it um, a camera animation. Nothing. Alright, so before you do anything else here, what I want you to do is just put little value here, like 0 0.2 for now. Just don't mind it or anything else. Just put it there. You can understand it later. Hit the record button and put a zero. Put it back to where it belongs. Just so your keyframe appears right here. Because sometimes when you're not recording, and you record, and you put a zero here, and you enter, nothing really appears. I'm gonna put my train here, make sure everything is still there. I'm gonna drag the timeline and put it on 300. Right here. Now I'm gonna put here one, because obviously zero here and then one there. So I'm gonna put here one. And now we are at the end of our track, and I'm gonna hit this again, because I'm not recording. And just like that, you can play with your timeline here at the bottom to see how things kind of go. And I'm going to hit play, just to see how this goes. As you can see. That is how it's like. Now, if that's too fast for you, just drag your timeline right here, all the way here. Also, you can even right-click and edit an animation window, and you can drag this wherever you want. As you can see, 300 frames right here is 5 seconds. And I want mine to be around... Maybe I'm just going to test this out and hit X. Don't worry, it's going to move this thing right here too. I'm going to hit play. There you go. Now it's moving a bit. Let's see that full screen. Game. Maximize. Um, hit play. So quickly save your things because Unity crashed on me once and I have to redo all this Sin Machine timeline thing again because I undo so much and sometimes I hit Control Z 
like, and I hold it, which is stupid. I don't know why I do that, but you live and you learn. But anyway, I was having some issues way before then. It kind of, like, kind of stutters here. It's, like, zoom in first and then zoom out, if that makes any sense. So it kind of, like, goes forward this character and then go backwards. So Mikhail went down and told me it's because he said... I'm not giving the engine enough time to load it, if that makes any sense. But all he did was, he put this um, frame right here, instead of 0, he put it on 30. So this area right here is going to be a space where everything loads first, and Unity set up everything so everything else here loads smoothly. So think of it like a loading phase. It's like, you know, when you're... <laughs> Playing Skyrim, I don't know if you played Skyrim before, they have this loading screen where while they're showing the artifacts and the artworks, models that the artist done, and rules of the world or stuff like that. The whole scene is kind of like buffering, loading, making sure everything is set up. So that's where those loading screens are for. So right now it's not really showing, like when I hit play, as you can see it just automatically goes back. And that's what I want. But in case you land into the first problem that I've had, all you have to do is right click here and go to edit in animation, drag this somewhere like in here and just play. As you can see, so you have that little time there where everything kind of loads a little if that's what you want to do. Right now the problem is not really showing but in case it shows, I like to have some pause first and then load. And also I'm going to drag this, as you can see these are your keyframes. So there's like 20 frames per second, and I want mine to be around 15 seconds maybe. I'm going to test it out. Hit play. So now it's kind of like slowly backing up, which is what I like, but a little too slow again. One of the tricks that Mikhail um, kind of taught me was hit pause first and hit play. He said it's going to give the engine a chance to kind of like load everything first so everything kind of plays smoothly. Because just because you are having this error right here where it kind of stutters at the beginning doesn't mean it's going to show in the build. So I'm going to hit this and as you can see this is how it looks like smoothly on the actual build supposedly and I'm on my 1800 frames. Okay, so one last test. I'm going to make this bigger. I'm also going to take this closer a bit. I'm going to maximize. Control S to save. And I'm going to play. And check our final render. As you can see, we have that pause there first. And now it's slowly backing up. And yeah, this is what we want. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this little rendering thing on Submachine and I hope you guys kind of experimented on this because Submachine is really, really, really good. And on the next course, we are going to implement the business side of everything that you've learned. You've come from the beginning or if you just start on the intermediate, I know it's a lot of work and I'm really proud of you. That sounds so very cringy, but of course, I would assume that you would want to make money off your art. So that is exactly what we're going to do on the next course. Integrate the business side of everything via the asset store of Unity. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach me on Discord, Patreon, Gumroad, anywhere you want to be. And of course, I will see you guys on the next course.